blinked and looked up at Clover. She held out her hand. You've got a notebook and a pen, right? Can I borrow them? Slightly confused, he pulled them out and handed them to her. Look at this. Clover opened the notebook to a blank page and set it down on the desk. Everyone else gathered around her and watched as she wrote down a series of numbers. Okay, I will read it. Whenever, whenever I can, I will read it. Okay? You get it? Numbers on the top are all the combinations with digital roots of 9. The numbers on the bottom are the people who don't fit. There's only 8 possibilities if we split up into 2 groups of 3 or 4 people. Fan comic about Brendan dating Courtney. Brendan in the game! When you pick me? Brendan is so annoying! Just, ugh, he's such a dick. So, if 3 people go through the door, then 4 are left behind. If 4 go through the door, then 3 are left behind, right? Clover nodded, almost as if she were pleased with herself for solving a difficult math problem. The room went very quiet. Silence lay ac across everyone like a thick, heavy blanket. No one spoke. Their faces were blank. Desperate for something else to look at, Jinpei turned his eyes to the room around him. As he did, he began to wonder, what was it? The walls were covered with candles. The wavering flame made the shadow made the shadows of the of Junpei and his companions look as though they were dancing. Two rows of wooden pe uh, pews. Pews? What are pews? The pews? Seats? Um, the seats? Pews are like the seat, uh, seats you'd see in a church, I think. Oh, okay. The best way to put it? Yeah, the, the ones that I see in, the, in this image. Those are the pews. Yes. Okay. Filled almost... It filled most of the room. Between them was a strip of rich red carpet. Dating a magma grunt got really popular, but it's currently on hiatus because the maker is in the military or something. Manga Brendan is a pretty cool guy. I don't know much about the game, Brendan. Oh, if um, if you watch my playthrough, you get to see game Brendan, and he's kind of a dick to you. Because obviously you're playing as a girl. But yeah. Um, the carpet ran straight through the room, ending at the door that pointed to the stern of the boat. At the other end of the carpet... An altar? It was a res recessed, recessed, recessed space set into yeah. Rival Brendan was a dick. Into the wall between the two other doors. Sitting on a raised section of the altar was a coffin. A coffin. A coffin. A coffin. No, it couldn't possibly be. But if it wasn't. Then whose body occupied it? You'll be playing as a girl? Yeah, I'm gonna be playing as a girl too, and it's gonna be so cool. That was as far as Junpei wanted to pursue that line of thought. He decided not to think about the coffin for the time being. The rooster hat. <laughs> Cock a doodle doo. Cock a doodle doo. At that moment, Seven spoke. There was an edge of humor in his voice, but it was forced. Okay, I give up, I give up. I figured if we sat around here long enough, someone would volunteer, but I guess nobody's got the guts to do it. Junpei didn't understand, and he, was, and he wasn't the only one. What? You guys didn't figure it out yet? Oh, fine, fine. Let me enlighten you. Clover was mostly right with her little explanation earlier, but she missed something. She wasn't really wrong. She just... Screw it. Let me just write it out. Well, I told you that we're trying to set up the, um... Uh, the credit card. You, you couldn't... You could have just waited. Seven snatched up the book and began to write in it. Everyone else clustered around him, desperate for a look. If you're trying to leave a group of three and a group of four and get everybody out, Clover's right. I am not like, okay, so Akira, I haven't seen anything 
about Pokemon Sun and Moon. I've only seen it before the E before E three, and I've only played the demo, so I don't know. She doesn't know about the trailer that just came out too. I don't know about the trailer that just came out. Yep, and everybody is out. Clover's right, but there's another way. Only one combination though. If you split us into groups of three, three, and one, you can make this combination. Wait, this means. Don't get me wrong here. I'm not trying to copy Ace or anything like that. Even if I, if he hadn't been the hero back in the big hospital room, I'd still be saying the same thing. The same thing? Are you saying, yeah, I am. I'll stay behind. Wh why are you acting so heroic all of a sudden? Are you some kind of idiot? Lotus was the first to speak. That in itself was a little strange. She'd reacted much different, differently when Ace had volunteered. I'm completely against this. I'll be goddamned if I'm going to have to owe you for getting out of for getting out of here. I mean, you also owe him for your daughter's life. That's besides the point. The rest of them began to speak all at once. I'm against it too. I didn't want to leave Ace behind, and I don't want to leave you either. I don't like that idea. That's gotta be. There's gotta be a, other options. I disagree as well. I can't say I care much for you being the hero. Finally, they quieted down. Junpei looked at Seven. Well, there you go, Seven. Proposal denied. I I want to be so surprised. That's the whole point of not saying spoilers. <laughs> I mean, okay. So I know a couple of things. I know that it's more like the Orange Isles, and there's trials instead of gyms, but I'm excited about that. I'm actually very excited about that, so that's all I know. But that's also because of sort of the uh, the demo. The demo sort of told you that a little bit, but at the same time, my, my brother spoiled it a little bit for me. Anyway, Clover is right. There's gonna be a better way than this. Seven made some noise that it was somewhere between a derisive snort and a cough. Hmm. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. He was doing his best to pretend they were making a foolish de decision, but Junpei could see a twinkle of water at the corners of Seven's eyes. That was when Santa spoke. Well, hold on a minute. I haven't said anything yet. Until then, Junpei hadn't realized that Santa had stayed quiet for the whole discussion of Seven's fate. Something in his voice made Junpei uncomfortable. Are you ag agreeing? Yeah, the lo Loki, the demo was Pokemon Snap too, and I'm excited for that. You want to leave him here? Santa shook his head. Nah, I'm against it. I don't want to leave Seven here alone. And I don't see how it matters. I said alone. Eh? I said I don't want to leave Seven alone. There was a dull shine in Santa's eyes. They were cold and hard. Junpei felt himself shiver. What the hell are you... What? You don't get it? I can't leave just one person. I need two more. Three people included seven. I'll be leaving behind three people. That's my proposal. No. Those are my orders. What do you mean, orders? What the hell makes you think you can order us round? Who the hell's gonna listen to you? You all will. In three seconds, you won't have a choice. What? Three, two, one. Santa was so fast, Junpei could barely see him. See him. When he moved, it was almost like watching a dance. His feet would move. His feet. The, the, his feet moving like lightning. He spun and. Ah. What the fuck? Yep. He had June. See? I told you. His lips curled into a cruel, mocking smile. A shudder tra traveled the length of Junpei's spine. His chest froze, and he could feel his breath go stale in his lungs. Nothing made sense. Junpei felt as though his head were about to explode. Sent a sudden change in attitude. Saying that he needed two more? The gun in his right hand. A revolver. 
Santa had grabbed June from behind and pressed against Junpei's shaken brain and pressed what Junpei's shaken brain identified as a revolver roughly against her temple. What was he doing with a gun? Where on earth had Santa possibly found a gun? Junpei's questions roared in his mind, but his mouth refused to ask them. Seven spoke, almost as though he had sensed Junpei's confusion. The guns from the other room. What, uh, what room? One of the rooms behind door six. I should have known he was going to do this. He should have taken the gun. <laughs> well, it's too late now, fat ass. Damn it. The mixture of fear and frustration twisted Seven's face and he glared at Santa. Santa, for his part, didn't so much as flinch. The corner of his lips twitched into a slightly wider smile. Then the smile faded and he began to move. He walked backward, dragging June with him. Before long, his back was resting against the door. On the wall next to him was the red. He put his hand on the scanner panel quickly and then forced June to do the same. Now, time for you to start following my orders. Ace Lotus, congratulations. I've chosen you to come with me. Put your hands on the red. 3 plus 6 plus 1 plus 8. 18. That was sa what Santa had meant when he said he needed two more. Hey, you deaf? I gave you an order. Santa's eyes narrowed to slits. He glared at Ace and Lotus. They stayed frozen, like deer caught in the headlights of an oncoming car. Right. Fine. I didn't want to waste any bullets, but you guys just don't get it. No sooner were the words out of Santa's mouth that his hand switched. And the gun roared. And the section of the floor exploded, scattering wooden splinters across the floor. A thin plume of smoke snaked out of the hole in the floor. There could be no doubt that the gun was real, and worked. But why? Santa, why are you... Clover's voice spoke of betrayal and disbelief. Santa, I thought... I thought you were one of us. I thought we were friends. What? You knew about the leaf word, and the fork leaf clover. Santa's cheek, a cheek twitched almost imperceptibly. What the hell is that shit? I've got no idea. You're lying. Shut up. Just shut up, you stupid bitch. You want me to put a bullet in your fucking head? Flecks of spit flew from Santa's mouth. His face twisted with rage. Clover recoiled, her eyes wide. When she spoke, her voice was very small. Santa. He snorted, then shook his head vigorously and turned to face Ace and Lotus. All right, assholes. What are you still standing there for? Get over here and scan those bracelets. I don't have all day. Oh, what's the matter? Your hearing starting to go? Going senile, maybe? Ace and Lotus still didn't move. It almost seemed as if they couldn't move. June's face was pale behind Santa's arm. Her eyes were wild and her chest heaved with every quick breath like an animal predator cornered by a predator. Junpei's mind worked furiously. What were they going to do? Then he realized something. There was nothing they needed to do. There was nothing to debate. Jun's safety was the first priority. That much was obvious. Doing as Santa had commanded meant that she would be safe from at least two threats. She wouldn't be shot, and she would leave the ship alive along with Santa, Ace, and Lotus. There was only one thing for Junpei to do. He turned to Ace and Lotus. Please, go. Huh? But, Jumpy, what are you saying? Yeah, Santa's hurting all the waifus. If you stay here, you're gonna be stuck, Jumpy. And so will Clover and Seven. I know. But you don't need to worry about us. We'll figure something out. Right, Seven? Right. You just leave it to us. It's gonna p piss me off to do what Santa says, but... Don't worry about me either. There's still something I have to take care of. But, no, you can't. Ace, Lotus, don't do it. Don't worry about me. <laughs> Please. Jin was almost crying. Jinpei walked 
around behind Lotus and Ace and Lotus. 